there is one woman who is always there for me through the highs and lows of every mall trip, it was my Auntie Anne with her buttery, delicious pretzel nuggets. Hi, I'm Joy, and welcome to the Side Chef Studio Kitchen. Today, we're making gluten-free pretzel nuggets. We're gonna start by blooming our yeast in 110 degree Fahrenheit milk. First, we're gonna add in some honey, just so the yeast has something to eat. Then I'm just gonna mix in the honey so that it's all dissolved. And then I'm gonna add in my yeast. You just wanna give the yeast a quick stir and then you wanna leave it alone. We're gonna leave it in a warm place for five to 10 minutes. So today I'm using milk to bloom my yeast because in gluten-free baking, you're always trying to build as many proteins as you can. And in this case, milk does that better than water. While our yeast is blooming, we're gonna mix all our dry ingredients together. We have flour, then we're gonna add salt, baking powder, and brown sugar. We're just gonna mix it all together so that it's all incorporated. The yeast has bloomed, you can tell, because it's nice and fluffy on top, so we're gonna add that to our dry mixture. And then we're gonna add the rest of the milk, an egg, and the butter. Now that everyone's in the bowl, we're just gonna mix them all together. You can use a stand mixer for this, but I prefer to use my hands because you can control the texture and consistency a lot easier. Why do people like pretzel mysteries? Because there's always a twist at the end. <laughs> now that our dough is combined, we're just gonna knead it on the countertop for three or four minutes. It's the pretzel workout, get down. <laughs> we're just kneading it to the consistency of clay or soft Play-Doh. Um, we just really want to get a nice smooth ball before we leave it to rise. So I'm just gonna oil it with some vegetable oil and then I'm gonna put the dough inside and give it one toss. And then we will cover it with a clean kitchen towel. Just leave the dough someplace warm like a sunny windowsill or maybe close to an oven. Preheat your oven, preheat your oven. Preheat the oven to 425 Fahrenheit or 215 Celsius. We're gonna line our baking sheets with parchment paper. Our dough has been rising for one hour and now the texture is super soft, so perfect. We're ready to make our pretzels now, so we're just gonna work with the dough one handful at a time and then we're just gonna oil our surface. We're using oil instead of flour because we want the texture of the dough to stay the same. We just spent so much time getting it nice and soft and we don't want that to change. But while you're working with your dough, you're just gonna cover up Squeeze it so it's a cohesive ball, and then we are going to roll it out. So now that we have our long dough, we're gonna cut it into our pretzel nuggets. So you're gonna do about half inch to one inch pieces. I like to use my finger as a measurement, so I just do to the tip of my finger and then measure it out all the way down. So now that all our pieces are cut, we're just gonna roll them on the counter to get smooth edges so they look just like Auntie Anne's pretzel nuggets. We have our first set of pretzel nuggets done. Now we're gonna work through the rest of the dough. So you're just gonna grab another handful and then do the exact same thing. We've made all our nuggets now. It's time to move over to the stove. We're gonna bring eight cups of water to a boil. You know, they say a wash pot never boils, but I find actually if you stare at it hard enough, it actually heats it up faster. Now that we have our boiling water, we're gonna add sugar and baking soda. Go a little slow here, depending on your pot, you don't want it to boil over, so I'm just gonna go in a little bit, then a little bit more, a little bit more. So we've added the baking soda to the water and it creates a chemical reaction with the dough that gives you a really nice crust on the outside but a really pillowy texture on the inside. Now it's time to boil our pretzel. So I have a slotted spoon here. I'm just gonna fill it up with about six, depending on the size of your slotted spoon, you can do more. Then I'm gonna put them in the water for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And you'll see they'll start to float up to the top. And we just grab them out and we put them on the tray. When they get on the tray, just make sure that they aren't touching and then we'll do it again. I would say I was probably like 12 or 13 when I first had pretzel nuggets and I was just obsessed. It was just a really strong sensory memory of having really buttery fingers and being with friends and just having a good time, you know, being a kid and 
being free kind of for the first time, right? Like when you go to the mall when you're a kid, it's like, oh, like your parents aren't there. Like you can walk around, you can do whatever you want. So obviously now that I'm gluten free, it's not something that I can have anymore. So I really just wanted to use those memories to create a recipe that could be enjoyed by obviously me, but anyone who's gluten free and is missing really soft and delicious pretzels. We're so close to finally eating our pretzels. So the last step is to egg wash and salt your pretzels. So we're just gonna take one beaten egg and paint our pretzels. Make sure you're getting all of the sides. We're just gonna add a pinch of salt on top of every pretzel. Put the pretzels in the oven for eight minutes and we're gonna turn the tray halfway through. They're ready. They look perfectly golden brown. I'm super excited. So this part is optional, but I'm gonna toss them in two tablespoons of melted butter just to give them that Auntie Anne's feel. So I'm just gonna pick up the parchment and just pour them in. Ooh. Or you can toss them like this. Woo! So today we're serving our nuggets with ranch dressing, but feel free to do whatever sauce you like. You can do buffalo sauce, you can do a cheese sauce, totally up to you. They smell amazing. Being gluten-free, I've missed these so much, but I'm finally chowing down again. Delicious. So freaking good.